Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for uh, showing up and hanging out. Uh, today's video, I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about white balance. Um, I joined the Luminar Coffee Break uh, recently and talked about it and I thought I would make a video. Uh, I thought I would make a video about uh, what I talked about there because I think it's useful and helpful to get you editing your photos in the way that you want to edit them and understanding kind of how color and temperature and white balance, all that kind of works together. So I'm going to walk through that and just kind of give an example. This is not an editing workflow, but more so an example of what you need to be aware of and how to think about correcting and adjusting white balance in your photos. Now, here's an image that I'll use kind of as a base image. And the first thing I want to talk about is white balance itself. Number one, I shoot raw files. Um, I, I shoot in raw format, I should say, versus in JPEG. In raw format, you have more flexibility in post to go in and make a better refinements. You have more data to work with and things like that. So I typically shoot in auto white balance 100% of the time uh, because I come back and I'll fix it in post, so to speak. Now that may not necessarily be the right thing to do for everybody, but for me and the things that I shoot, which would be cityscapes like this, as well as landscapes, it works totally fine for me because I'm coming in and adjusting each photo individually as I go and edit them. If you're shooting a wedding, for example, or portrait session, you would probably want to adjust white balance and camera to make sure you're getting it right to minimize the amount of time that you need to spend correcting those photos on the back end before you deliver them to your client. So depending on what you shoot and kind of what your goals are, you might approach it differently. I just wanted to say I'm always shooting in raw and I'm always shooting in auto white balance. But this video is going to be about adjusting that white balance in post here in Luminar. So there's really three ways to do it. And what it's really all about is getting the scene to look in the photo like it really looked in real life. You're kind of balancing out the whites and the grays. You're trying to get kind of a neutral gray, or I should say looking for that kind of neutral gray. I'm gonna show this to you here in a second. It'll make a little bit more sense. So in your develop raw, and by the way, it's a little bit different if you shot a JPEG. In develop raw, you've got this drop down menu, which I'll talk about in a second. You don't have that with JPEG. So you basically have three different ways to adjust the white balance. You can use this drop down menu and pick some of these, I'll call them presets. Um, so you could click daylight and it'll adjust accordingly. If I say it's cloudy, you'll see it gotten a little bit warmer there. When I go to shade, uh, also a little bit warmer. Tungsten's always really super blue, of course. Fluorescent and flash will look slightly different as well. So I typically don't do that. I just leave it as shot and I will come down and use the sliders. The sliders is the second way to try to get that white balance looking right, which is adjusting temperature and tint. So temperature, of course, to the right, you can warm things up and you can kind of see how that's looking or uh, perhaps go a little bit cooler if you're wanting to do that. And if you double click, you can reset those back to zero. By the way, the number here is in degrees Kelvin. So that's measuring the temperature of the light in the photo. So as you can see, the higher number, the warmer, the more degrees Kelvin, and the lower number, the cooler uh, or, or less degrees Kelvin. That's the, uh, the base photo there. And then the tint basically helps you. Sometimes you might have a color cast in your images. It's a little bit green. The tint going to the other direction will help you get a little bit of that um, either add magenta for creative effect, which I do a lot like in sunsets and blue hour shots like this one or basically overcome anything that might be kind of green. So, you know, if you have a green kind of color cast like that, you can drag the tint to the right to balance it out and get a little bit more neutral or natural look to your photos. Now, one of the things I want to talk about in this video is this right here, which is basically a copy of kind of uh, what I call a color wheel. And this is just something I found on the internet, but it's very important, I think, here in this video to think about when you're adjusting colors. And I'll show you why in a second, but these basically show opposite colors. So red, the opposite color is cyan. Green, the opposite color is magenta. And blue, the opposite color is yellow. The reason that comes into play is when you get over here to the third way to adjust the white balance. Remember, the first one is the drop down menu. Second one is the temperature and tint sliders. The third one is this eyedropper. So if you click on that and you start to hover over different things in the image, you will see that it says pick a target neutral and then um, I'll just pause here and you can see in the bottom of that square, there's an R, a G and a B. That stands for red, green, blue, the primary colors in a digital photograph. And those numbers represent that value. 
when those numbers are equal, like in this case, the color that you selected or the, the spot that you selected, I should say with this eyedropper, which is this light bulb right here, it'll be the same on this light bulb. Um, I can click that and what I'm saying is that should be neutral gray in the image. And so when all three of those numbers were equal, then it's telling me it is actually neutral because they're equal. And when I click it, you can see there wasn't much of a color shift at all in the photo or temperature shift simply because it was already fairly neutral. Whereas if I come over here and pick this one, you can see there's more in the R. So R is 255 value, green is less and blue is less. So remember what's happening here is Luminar or any other product, you know, this could be Lightroom or whatever. What it's doing is saying, oh, okay. So that the red is the primary dominant color in that so if you're telling me that's neutral, I need to go away from the red to balance it out. So if you look here, away from red is cyan. So if I click that, it's gonna turn it more blue because it's basically going the other way and saying, oh, if that, what I consider red, remember it was, if I click on that, it was really heavy on the red value and lower on the other ones. So if it's saying, hey, that's neutral, then I need to really go the other way to ensure that um, I neutralize that color, right? So uh, once again, I'm just gonna select this. I'll try something over here. This is gonna be more in the purples. And so if you look here, it's got a red of 93, a green of 64, and a, a blue of 102. So more blue than anything else. Opposite of blue is yellow. So when I click that, it goes a little bit more toward the yellow. Now this is kind of green, but if you remember, it was also picking up a fair amount of, let me reset it and go back over here, picking up a fair amount of that red and blue, right? So click on that and it's kind of going the opposite way. Let me hit reset and show you a couple of other examples here. Here's one that's really heavy on the green. So I found this little light and that's why I'm using this scene. There's a lot of colors in it. But this one, you can see the green is 179, much larger number than the other two. So it's a lot more green in that spot that I'm picking. So if I'm telling Luminar that that's green, when I click it, it's gonna go the opposite way, which is more towards the magenta to try to balance it out. So all it's trying to do is figure out based on what you tell it with this dropper, that, oh, if that's neutral, then I need to shift colors in a different direction in order to actually create a neutral photo. So here, another example, heavy on the blue, the opposite of the blue is kind of the yellows, and so it's going in that direction. Now keep in mind, it's, it's taking into account all three of these numbers. And so this one, the red and the blue are pretty close, but the green is really low. So when I click on that, it's going more toward the green because it's getting a red away from the red and the blue, right? So you can see the red and the blue getting away from both is kind of green. So that's basically how it's working. And so let me show you how I use this in editing photos. Okay, so here's just a basic seascape at sunset. And this is the type of photo where I would come in and do some uh, white balance, temperature, tint kind of adjustments in order to get the photo looking kind of the way I want it to look. I might do something a little bit like that to create a soft kind of dreamy but colorful uh, look to the photo. But let's say you wanted to perhaps do um, an adjustment to one of the drop downs. If you look here, it's not having a huge effect. Some of these are kind of subtle. If I go to tungsten, it'll be very blue. Also note, every time you do that, these are moving. So you could do that, but then come back a little bit with the temperature and say, well, I wanted to start kind of blue, but I want to pull it slightly away from the blue. So you can kind of use the uh, the eyedropper, if you will, or the drop down as a starting point and then refine them with the temperature or uh, and or tint sliders. I tend to just come in and do temperature and tint on my own just simply because I just like to kind of have full control. But let me show you the dropper here. So once again, if I say I'm going to pick a target neutral, that's pretty close to neutral if you look at it because those three numbers are pretty similar. So when I click that, the photo didn't really change because it's saying, well, if that's target neutral and all three of those are basically equal, then there's not really a lot to do because those three are basically equal. But if I come in and pick something different, let's see, uh, I'll pick this where the red is 245, green is 226, and the blue's 184. So there's more red than anything. So it's gonna go more toward the blue because I'm telling it that red color is neutral. And so it says, oh, well, if that's neutral, I need to go the other way. So let's try it over here with the blue. So blue here, 159, that's the highest number. Away from the blue, remember, is toward yellow, probably some red in this one as well when I choose it and it warms it up, it actually goes really yellow here. So not really a look that I like in that photo, but you could come in here and say, all right, 
Well, I want to do a little bit of creative stuff. So if I pick the blue as a target neutral, you can see blue is 190, the other two in the 160s. So if I click that, it's going to go more toward the yellow. And you could say, I wanted a warmer sunset, maybe not that warm. Let me pull that back just a little bit and maybe add a little bit of tint and you can get to a spot where you feel like you like the result. Again, my personal preference is to come in here and just kind of move temperature and tent slider and adjust accordingly. And to be clear, I've done nothing else to this photo. We're in develop raw and just kind of playing around. Now here's another example where these three are fairly close to uh, equal the three numbers, the red, the green, the blue, slightly more red in that rock. But you know, if I move around here, I'm trying to find something. Uh, I'll, I'll use that, let's say, for example. Those three are fairly equal in terms of number, uh, slightly more towards the red, so it goes slightly blue. That's the other thing to be aware of. When the numbers are pretty close, but one number is a slight bit more than the others, the change is not going to be as significant because it says, hey, we're pretty close together here. Whereas if you do something where one number is really off the charts, the amount of change is quite a bit more drastic. So just keep that in mind. But I always try to keep this in mind, which is basically a color wheel or color chart because that helps me keep in mind which colors are opposite. And therefore, when I'm editing a photo, which colors are gonna be perhaps showing up more dominantly once I make that eyedropper adjustment. So I hope all of that gives you some idea about how temperature and tint and basically white balance work in Luminar, some things to think about as you're adjusting it and how I typically go about making those adjustments myself. You know, again, not a full editing tutorial, but rather kind of a discussion, for lack of a better word, around white balance, how to adjust it, fix it. And of course, you can use it creatively to get the look that you want within Luminar. And again, this was just white balance. So for any photo, there were other things I would be doing as well, which would be, you know, up here with light, where I'd be doing contrast, highlight, shadows. And then maybe a photo like this, I might come in and add something in gold uh, in landscape, like golden hour, or go down to toning and maybe add some warm uh, warmth into the highlights, things like that. Lots of different creative tools you can use to get the final look, but I wanted to start with white balance itself because that is where I start with my photos in terms of editing and getting kind of the base color look going before I go do creative things on top of it. Hope it helps my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care of yourselves and until next time, adios.